Hi, everyone. We're just going to give it one more minute and let people log on. This is the uh, Penny webinar. We're doing performance today. Okay, let's get started. Um, this is our second webinar in our series. Um, as I mentioned uh, with the last one, uh, we have a lot of people logging on and joining us, so everyone is on mute. What I do ask, if you have questions at all during the presentation or questions afterwards, uh, email us at crc at pennyatworks.com. That's our help desk email, crc at pennyatworks.com. Uh, at the end of the webinar, I'm going to take some of the questions that come in. If I don't get to your question today, I will reach out to you later this afternoon um, to touch base and answer it for you. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to discuss performance. Um, in Penny, there are two different rate of return calculations. Um, each one uses a different um, methodology. And so which one you use is up to you. Uh, Penny does the linked rate of return, or the ROR, as well as calculating an IRR, uh, the IRR being um, the time-weighted uh, cash flows. So how do you get Penny to calculate performance? Well, within the Fund tab, there's a section for performance. Uh, this little cogwheel, period performance, this is where you um, will manually tell the system to calculate performance. So you select your fund. Uh, the period must be eligible. To be eligible, that means the period is closed. So this one's process. I'm going to just pretend for a second and delete it. So you'll see process no. So to process performance, you hit process. It's as simple as that. Um, if you have an environment where you're calculating performance across all of your funds, there is an environment setting. Under environment settings, um, auto calculate performance. So if you have this set to yes, what this will do is anytime you process the ending period of a fund and do a close, the system will automatically calculate performance. And that just saves you the trip to the performance section uh, to do it manually. So that's how the system calculates performance. And that, you know, took all of a couple minutes to go through. Uh, it's quick, it's easy. Um, so what this webinar, what we're really going to focus on is not just how to calculate performance, but looking at what numbers the system generates as well as where those numbers come from. So first, let's take a look and see. We've calculated performance. What does that mean? There are different levels of performance. Uh, there's the fund level, uh, the investor role, and by series and also by the investor. So within Penny, we have two different folders, fund level reports and investor level reports. So there's what's called the fund performance returns report. If you run this, I'm going to run it by fund summary. This is going to give us the performance for the fund as a whole. And what does it give us? It gives us a period to date number, both gross and net, the difference between gross and net being the incentive fee. We have a uh, calendar quarter to date, a month to date, three months, six months, year and in inception. It also will report uh, the IRR, and as well as some rolling numbers, uh, 12, 36, 60, and 120 month rolling numbers. This report can be run, and a lot of the performance reports are like this. There's different report types. So you can run this by fund summary. You can also run it by investor role and series. This is going to give you the performance broken out at the investor role level. So you'll see here, now we have performance broken out uh, for my different roles. I have an SLP role and an LP role. So this is great. Here are your performance numbers, but that's not enough. We still want more. What we need is where do these numbers come from? What if you don't agree with the number? What if you want to do a little research and find out, okay, that's my quarter to date number, where does that come from? So the first area I'm going to point you to is our help file. Now, with the help file, as most people are already using in Penny, if you hit F1 at any time, the help file for that topic is going to come out. 
So we have help file uh, help files for all the different sections within performance. So anything you need specific to these reports or the processing. But I'm going to point you, if you go to the contents, there's a folder called accounting concepts. And here there's two areas. One, the rate of return calculation. What this is going to give you is the formulas behind the IRR and our linked rate of return. So here's the actual formula that the system uses. So if you question, how is Penny calculating my quarter to date number, this is the formula that it uses for that linked rate of return. It also goes into some detail about the difference between gross versus net and how the system calculizes it, uh, calculates its annualized returns. Also in the help file, if we go back to accounting concepts, if you go under the fund concepts, there's an area for performance. And this has even more formulas. This is now uh, at the different levels of calculation. There are slight differences between, for example, fund and series uh, and um, offshore and onshore investors. So here's the calculation for gross and net with some definitions of exactly, um, you know, for example, what the incentive fee equals. So, aim, you know, armed with these formulas, you can then see where the system gets its numbers. So when you're looking at what is my period to take performance, you know the formula. But again, let's go even a little deeper. So you have the formula, but it would be nice if you had all the components. So one of my favorite reports is the fund, um, the performance activity report. The performance activity report gives you the breakdown of those components. So if you're questioning your month to date number, or I should say period to date number, this report is going to give you gross and net, your opening balance. So this, when the formula says it's using, using the opening balance, this is the number it's using. It's also going to give you the, the P&L being used, the incentive fee. Um, I'm going to get into it in a little bit, but if you have any other additional uh, complexities, such as if you're ex excluding some P&L, um, it's going to list that out as well. So by using these numbers and the formulas uh, from the section of the help file, you can come up with exactly where the system is getting its number. Now those are the fund level returns. Uh, the same reports are invest uh, available at the investor level as well. So we have the performance returns report, which actually I'm just going to run for everybody. So this report now will drill down to the investor level. And again, the performance activity report is going to give you that breakdown of all the different components used to calculate performance for the period by investor. So another report I'm going to direct you to is the performance audit report. This report can be run several different ways. Uh, so there's uh, by type. You have investor fund level. This report also can be used for cash flows. Uh, for those that are doing private equity, if you're tracking your cash flows, um, this report will show you all the dates and amounts for your cash flows that the system's using. If you run it by investor, let's say you're questioning a calendar to date number or a year to date number, you could run the fund performance returns report for every month and grab the period to date number. But what this report does is, by each period in the system, it's going to just show you your gross and net number. So this just is a way of giving you that information so that you can see, if you're looking at a linked rate of return, what the system is using over time. And just to show the IRR cash flows, I'm just switching funds here to a private equity fund. 
it's going to show you your cash flow date and your amounts gross and net. Now, I mentioned before the ability uh, to have your performance calculation be a little more complex and what we have what is called gross excluded accounts. So let's say, for example, you have a certain piece of P&L you do not want to be included in your performance calculation. Uh, there are certain clients that will, uh, I believe it's called super gross, where you have a gross number. Normally gross would be uh, exclusive of the incentive fee, but let's say you also want it exclusive of management fee. Or for some reason there's just another piece of P&L you do not want to include in your performance. What you can do is through the uh, exclude, you will set up, you can choose fund, account, and sub-account combinations. So any P&L booked into these combinations is going to be excluded from your uh, performance calculation. So in this example, I have an account set up special income 9500. So I'm going to just show you I did a journal entry. in May, and I booked $3,000 of income to this account, $9,500. So this $3,000, when the system calculates performance for May, it's going to be excluded from the performance calculation. Now that's something you'll definitely want to keep track of because if you're, uh, again, the ability to drill down and look at the components of your performance. So if I show you your performance activity report, for May, it's going to show here's my excluded gross amount. So I'm running this for all my investors. It's going to show what piece by investor was part of this excluded amount. Another report that will show this is the performance audit report. There is an, uh, a specific type, excluded gross P&L. And running this report is going to show again the total, you shall see the, oh, I have this run for the wrong fund. Switch out of private equity, back into a fund. This report will show the breakdown of that $3,000. So here's my total 3000 and it's broken down. So again, these reports just help you to tie back to what the system's using for that performance calculation. Now, as with most, most things in Penny, you do have the ability to override. So the, for example, performance overrides, these overrides are only for the period. So let's say you have, uh, I put in an override. The start date for overrides, um, are always going to be the beginning of the month. So if you have an override for May, the start date is going to be 5-1. And let's say for LP number one, I'm just going to put in a number 10%, 10 gross, 10 net, just to make it easy to spot the override. So you put in your override, gross and net. If you ever need to recalculate performance, as I mentioned, the period needs to be closed in order for performance to calculate, but you can recalculate performance as often as you want without having to reopen the period. And again, whether you normally calculate performance manually or whether you have the system set to automatically calculate performance, if you want to recalculate, it's the same thing. It's through the period performance utility. What you can do is select the period you want, you can either hit reprocess, it will reprocess that period, or you can outright delete the performance and hit process. The nice thing about this is it, there are some times where you want to or need to recalculate your performance for uh, over a large span of time. Well, because the per performance of periods is dependent upon the prior period, if I delete the performance for January, it's going to delete the performance for all the subsequent months. Similarly, if I want to reprocess May, it needs all the prior months processed. So if I want to process, in this example, the whole year, if I just go to May and hit process, it's going to do every month. So you don't have to do it one at a time. You can do it in chunks. 
And again, you do not have to reopen your fund. So if you're putting in an override, all you have to do is recalculate performance. So let's take a look at the report. Let's go to the performance returns report, and we overrode uh, LP number one. Let's look at him. And you'll see it is noted that it uh, was overridden with the X. And here's my number, 10%. And these overrides do carry forward into the next period. So the system will use 10% for uh, the month of May. Now, I did mention that the overrides here, uh, performance overrides and fund performance overrides, are just for uh, by period. If, let's say, you're initializing a fund and you need to override the year-to-date number or an inception-to-date number, the system does provide that ability through the backload. And there is a performance backload which um, is where you would enter in any um, time frame larger than a month. So in this case, you'll see you have um, your quarter to date, three months, six months, year, inception, and so on. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to, if you'll bear with me for one moment, I'm just going to talk to my colleague and see if any emails have come in with questions. So just give me one second. Okay, uh, our first question, it's a good question here. Um, do estimates include performance? Uh, yes, I did mention before that the period had to be closed for performance to be calculated, and that is true. However, if you're doing estimates, you do have the ability to do performance on estimates. So we're just going to go into the estimate screen. It is a drop down. It defaults to yes, so it will default to calculating performance on an estimate. You can turn that off, but it's through this... Um, selection that you tell the system that on an estimate it will calculate performance. So in those cases the period actually does not need to be closed. Um, as long as you have an estimate you can get uh, estimated performance for an estimated period. Okay, one of the other questions, let's go back to performance. Um, what is the investment performance? Okay, we do have a folder here for investment performance. Um, this is more towards our private equity funds or uh, funds that use the investment functionality. Uh, within private equity, there's fund investment, and you can keep track of your investments, um, the calls, the commitments, the distributions. Um, if you use this functionality, the system does keep track of that and can calculate performance um, by investment. And that's, again, using the private equity fund investment functionality. So you can actually get returns uh, on each investment. Okay, well that concludes our webinar on performance. Um, join us again next month. We will be having uh, another webinar on June 19th um, on RPX and custom statements. So if you haven't RSVP'd already, just drop me a note and I can add you to the list and we will speak with you then. Again, any other questions you have on performance, please email us at crc at Thank you so much. Have a good day.